I want to formally welcome you all to the Institute of African Studies, University of Nigeria, Soka. Non, Uleje, Beje. Um, I'm going to hand um, the program now over to Professor P.J. Eze, Institute of African Studies, University of Nigeria, Professor Uzioma Onuzulike. Present. Um, other officers of the institute, both uh, academic and non-academic. Professors that are here, my other colleagues, members of the Afibu community that are here, I learned about the passing of uh, Professor Tembe rather late, uh, about two weeks ago, although it happened at uh, the last quarter of last year. I learned about it through uh, obituary in the Seattle Times, where he lived and taught. So, and it was 1st November. With your kind permission, I read my paper, actually, uh, properly speaking, an outline. The title, is the same as the theme of our meeting. Otembe lives in these works. An obituary writer in the Seattle Times described Simon Otembe's publications as, quote, voluminous. But, more importantly, for those of us in anthropology, many of those works are usually pathfinding. And for the natives of the places that he did his researches, they put them, that is the works, put those natives on the world map. Let's begin from the beginning, which is his ethnography among the Afiku Igbo. Young Simon and his wife at the time, Fini, arrived this Igbo community in 1952 to study the autochthonal social organization that is anchored on the age grade system. But it wasn't a people that he was coming to when he left the US. He was actually going to Ohafia but as it turned out, the colonial official law frustrated that effort. I would like to put what happened in his mouth, I would like to quote him word for word, narrating the experience that he had vis-a-vis uh, -vis the original plan of studying the Oafia. Quote, we originally have wanted to go to Oafia area, but in 1952, the 
colonial, the British colonial officers at Omaya will not let us. They did not want us there. And I think they felt that two Americans were not to be trusted. They did not understand the colonial system and how it worked. So we decided to go to Afi under a different province at the time. Afi was in Ogoja province. Uh, the speaker was also in that province. It's a very vast province that uh, is a combination of what you have now as a Borne and greater part of a uh, cross river state. And um, where the district officer, Mr. J.D. Livingstone Booth, was sympathetic to anthropology. And you could say it's just as well that they didn't accomplish their original mission as my anglophile daily literate cousin who was saying is uh, Mr. Johnson like halting English every disappointment is a blessing who knows maybe Simon's accomplishments might not have been as enormous or spectacular to merit the level of global attention he ended up attracting. It was his publication on the Afiku double unilineal descent kinship system that first brought him to limelight in the world's academic community and put Afibu itself on the world's ethnographic map. He gave his book the title Double Descent in an African Society, the Afibu Village Group. And it came out on the imprint of University of Washington Press in 1968, 11 years after defending his PhD thesis at the Northwestern University, also in, in the United States. His wife, Phoebe, was also researching for a PhD degree at the same time and place. It was Phoebe that made this intricate kinship system obvious in this topic, in the topic of her thesis. Uh, the man focused on the Afibu traditional political system. To this thesis was marriage relationships in the double descent system of a West African society. So you can see double descent from get go in a uh, this is the uh, title. But Simon named his own the system of authority of the Afibu Ibo of southeastern Nigeria. Now, as it turned out, it was the man that is Simon that became the exponent of the African peculiar form 
of kinship system. Now, why this is so is to be explained, that is why it happened that Simon ended up writing on double descent, which it's actually his wife that made the point of working on that from get go. Um, so why so is to be explained in the nature of anthropological research itself, how anthropologists research. It is their method is usually holistic such that to be able to explain a particular process of whatever or structure in a traditional society, you need to see for the, the interconnections that lead to that uh, process or lead to that structure. You don't just isolate the structure or the process and hope you can understand it. To understand it, you need really to look at everything. So, um, another reason for Simon's accomplishment is the place of kinship in a characteristic traditional society. One writer has said that kinship is to anthropology what logic is to philosophy or the new is to some genres of the visual art. Without logic, there is no philosophy. Without the nude, understanding the uh, intricacies of how you draw the nude, certain genres of uh, visual art will be impossible. So kinship is like that to anthropology. Every other thing links back to it in traditional society, politics, religion, economics, marriage, every, all other institutions are linked in some intricate ways to kinship. Uh, so, even if uh, Simon came originally to study African politics, uh, traditional politics, you find that to be able to do that, we must also foreign into the kinship domain because that determines all other things you can do in that society. So I will finish, although he set out to say, let me write to you how African people do their political uh, organization. Here who has learned enough to be able to now write on this uh, peculiar way of uh, organizing their kinship, which is double descent. Simon Rutenberg should himself, uh, Simon Rutenberg, in the method, I employed this method uh, adequately and competently. His integration with the Afriku was total. He underwent the Ogo rite of passage just a year after his uh, arrival. Ogo makes you 
a true Afi man. Indeed, if you have not done you good, you are as good as a kid. It does not matter your age. In a society whose home grown government is based on age grades, on arrival, he also joined uh, an age grade that was uh, appropriate to his, uh, his age. Um, that is the youngest of the age grades, the one called Umu Umuelia. And then he rose through the ranks. There are nine stages, nine stages. But the important thing for our purpose is that he rose through the ranks to the very last of the nine age sets, the one called Liquiri. At Liquiri, he was telling me this morning that you do nothing anymore. You just stay in the house. The younger ones will fetch and draw for you. They needn't necessarily be your relatives. He told me they could go hunting. All the, the games that are killed are processed and distributed to the, the queries. Of course, usually for the entire community, they will, you can count them on the fingertips. For a society also, where kinship determines the functions you can enjoy in all other institutions, and where the matricking and patricking are crucially important to the social life of members. He chose for himself a matricking, uh, that is a matrilineage, and also chose for himself a matrilineage. If you go to Africa, you might try this experiment. Just say, whether they know Peke, Ibogu. You, do, you need not say Simon Ntembe. <coughs> Peke, Ibogu is enough. And it means the white man of the Oku matrilineage. And they are so very, very, very proud of, of that because Oku then is the only Ip that has a white man for a member. Everyone knows whom you are talking about when you say Peke Ibuku. He also belonged to a patrilineage. The, his patrilineage is Omuuti Eziakota meaning the patrilineage of the Akota descendants. By the time Simon Utembe had finished with his uh, kinship studies, anthropologists realized that there had been things that they hadn't learned about this system of double descent. There are people who consider Otembeck's representation of their culture so accurate that they named him, they gave him a title. The title is Enyoegupo, which means the mirror of uh, Afiku. They gave him this title way before his uh, passing. They gave him the title in 1992. The same year 
that University of Nigeria also gave him, this university gave him, honorary doctor of literature for those works of his. Among Simon Otenbeck's 20 odd books, some are about art, for that matter, African art. Indeed, for that matter, Nigerian art. Indeed, for that matter, Igbo art. One in which he wrote on the Soka, focusing on the best known seven of the Nsuka artists at the time he wrote, I think, uh, 1997. The Seattle Times obituary whom I have cited, uh, obituary writer whom I have cited early on, made a point of highlighting how he promoted art in other ways, including opening an outlet for selling productions, art productions from Africa. I have spoken with practitioners, some practitioners of the uh, Nsuka school here, who testified to how they benefited from Otenberg's benevolence to African, indeed, Nigerian uh, artists. He has taken some of them over to America, the same, of course, as he did to members of the host African society. He has, uh, many of them are in the U.S. thanks to his uh, um, in, in, uh, intervention. In some of his lesser known works, Simon has written on acculturation or cultural transition in Afibu itself and in the Igbo ethnic group as a whole. The war on cultural transition among the Afibu was among his earliest, even before he defended his uh, PhD uh, thesis. That work was on post-contact forms of associations that were not part of the original uh, customs. They are not necessarily bad or inimical, these type of associations. They could be anything like what has evolved into um, cooperative societies or institutional societies or one thing or the other that uh, tend to have economic focus. In 1962, in a 1962 publication, he joined such early observers that included Bishop Ajay Crowder <coughs> and uh, Bishop uh, Basden in wondering, in wondering at the alacrity with which uh, Igbo, the Igbo, impressed foreign cultural practices. So, uh, Otempe was also puzzled. The name of his uh, 1962 article where he said this is Igbo Receptivity to Change. And it was in a book edited by his uh, PhD uh, supervisor, 
um, uh, ex school fees and uh, another of his teacher, whom he actually said was the one who told him to go and study the Igbo, William Ascon. So uh, now, there is no doubt uh, director, ladies and gentlemen, there is no doubt that Africa has lost its right. And that anthropologists and art scholars will fill this void keenly. But as long as the study of human sociality still remains, Liquidity, Professor Simon Otembe, 1923 to 2023, still lives. People will always go to his countless publications to meet him. The likes of him never really die. Liquidity. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we can do better by When you set up the invite, uh, the announcement, um, you give a special place to the head of the uh, artist reception of the Department of Fine and Industrial Art, the last second, the last second. Um, he is here with us. Professor Chris Mercy. And so please. <laughs> now that uh, PJ has finished speaking, and we do know that uh, Buttonberg will work a lot on the uh art department. Um, Maybe we'll start the discussion with you saying something about the tender and the Sukara community. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Or is it good afternoon? Um, I'm not an anthropologist, uh, although I have studied uh, culture from the point of view of um, the visual arts. I want to say uh, one or two things about Ottenberg and Ensoka School. And it's very simple. We saw Ottenberg as students in 1992. I remember very vividly the day he was awarded um, the doctorate, honorary doctorate. We were standing with the late professor Oloidi. Uh, Ottenberg was there, Ikoku was there, Alakija, who was the uh, pro chancellor, they were all piloting. And in his usual characteristic um, funny manner, Oloidi was making some jokes. I don't want to say what he said. <laughs> but I, no, I told you. <laughs> the day we were going to our people. So I met Ottenberg through Obiora Odechukwu on a day he was cleaning his studio and he said, Chris, please come uh, and help. And I went. At the end of the day, Odechukwu said, I saw he was buying some art uh, from Odechukwu and Odechukwu said, uh, please in the evening go to the Pro Chancellor's Lodge, or, or Chancellor's Lodge, and go with your works. And I did, and he bought some. You know, I was in final year then, 1992. Uh, it's something I, I will never forget. After that, uh, 2003, December, the first time I went to the US for the first time, Ottenberg traveled all the way from 
the University of Washington. Then he had not left the uh, university to come to look for me where I was uh, doing a creative residency. He drove to the place, took me to lunch because I was working on uh, creative meets, um, creation meets. He took me to a bookshop and bought a book on uh, Native American meets, which I still have. Uh, in fact, uh, two residencies I did later, he always came. You know, and when he bought my book, and my works in 1992, he bought a particular one where I had two chickens shaking hands. And he said he wanted to get it for his second wife, Carol, who was, um, he said she, she was running poultry at home, that she didn't like it. I got to meet Carol, I think, in 2014 when I was in Washington again, you know. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that he was somebody who was very helpful to the Nsoka school, beginning from somebody like Kaniako, Chika, Kaniako, Obiora, Odechuku, Sylvester, Wechie. Indeed, when Gun Walk was here, uh, rampaging the landscape. Uh, it was Ottenberg the, the, who organized the event he mentioned, 1997, at the Smithsonian, that enabled people like Chico Keke to leave this environment, because all of us were sacked. The gate who was in prison at some point, uh, Lloyd was in prison. I think it was uh, Tayo Adenaike who had a brother, a police uh, brother, a Makon, that uh, got his brother to get them out. We were sacked for that two months. Uh, Chica was lucky. Got to that event, the seven artists of the Nsoka school never returned um, happily. <laughs> So uh, he has been quite uh, uh, helpful. And indeed, I still have one or two manuscripts he gave to me, which are yet to be published on visual arts. And I hope uh, to find somewhere the relevant uh, publications to put them. So uh, this is what I know about him. You know, he has been very, very helpful to this uh, soccer school, and I hope that beyond here, those of us in art history will be able to celebrate uh, Ottenberg uh, the way we can uh, uh, through our works uh, and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have two questions. Uh, first one is very simple. Um, at the beginning of your talk, you did mention that the British colonial administration was uh, a little bit afraid of two Americans coming in to do something in the area, uh, half the area. Uh, my question would be, if there are two Americans, are you with, uh, is that referring to Ottenberg and his wife? Or uh, is there another um, American anthropologist who possibly didn't get the kind of uh, visibility that uh, Ottenberg had? <coughs> um, the second question that I would like to ask um, in your study of um, the Matrilinia that the uh, Matrilinians Concerns of Ottenberg. The Ottenberg have any concern towards uh, the Osu system? Um, that is after system where some persons come from a different society or community to join and become either through marriage or through or some other ways a part of uh, their people's society. If it is, what this is. Um, um, concerned with such people, what did he say or write about them? 
Thank you very much. If I had uh, Professor PGS here, I wish to say that um, these African anthropologists, European African anthropologists, contributed in some way to the tragedy of colonial mentality. So my question is, what are the modern anthropologists who are now mostly Africans doing to reverse this tragedy? Thank you. Talking about the impact of Rotenberg, like the others said, I'm very, very far from anthropology. Your name, My name is Greg Nandi Navigate by Geogro. Thank you, sir. Very far from anthropology, like the rest of us in the arts. Far from those, like Debra Pata, the other brother, who traversed all those areas. But uh, I'm particularly puzzled by Ottenberg's interest in innovation in African art. And to think about it, Gothenburg wasn't our closest handle to the Smithsonian Institute. The king, you probably would not be aware that Obi Asika, the son of Obi Asika, is a member of the board of the Smithsonian. But it took a white man who He's probably not even a member of the board of Smithsonian to take the seven uh, uh, core artists of the Union School to the Smithsonian. And, and this question, you know, kept, you know, pounding in my heart. Why is it that none people are the men they get by fed? Why, look at the way we are celebrating a white man who came here and touched our lives. Why is it so difficult for Dubai to protect our people? So, you know, it's exciting to me to be here because it's always said, nah, nah, it's both Kawane. But it's very much exemplified in the life and actions of Samuel Rotenberg. And I would think that this is an opportunity for us as a people to rethink how can we begin to help to celebrate what is original, what is novel about our people. Okay. Having said this, I'd like to stop here. Thank you. My name is Chika Khan. Oh, thank you for the great lecture. I just as a simple question. You said Ottenberg was frustrated from entering Oasia by the colonial British colonial government. They now moved to Afi. As at that, as at that time, was Afi people not under British colonial administration? That's thank you. Well, good morning. Now, the first of that, please. Great thanks to Professor and then to the director of the institute. Well, I have to confess, at least there's life in the Institute of Africa Studies now in terms of scholarship. There's life in the Institute of Africa Studies. Institute of Africa Studies. And what we are discussing today is strictly speaking African studies. My worry is that we have now listened to this topic. But as an institution, what type of research are we doing? Are we concerned with the researches that are indigenous? Or are we concerned with the researches that we promoting capital rights in the name of the impact factor? Some of the things we do here we never promote us. And it is going back to corroborate what Gutenberg and the earlier scholars have observed. 
that the emo are quick mm. to absorb anything coming from us. To give an answer from the personal perspective, because one of the issues that we have to understand is, yes, the evil are behaving this way. Why is this so? What is the genesis of this change in behavior? If you read the Calvary documents, especially that of the Christian mission, Father Louvain made a particular statement. As far back as 1851, Niger mission, 57 rather, Niger mission, Father Duvern said that time shall come when the people will forget their past. Because the original people that started Christianity were those that we are those that we are sold as slaves and we are redeemed. They have lost touch with their original society. So they are now positioned and they become the powers of the early civilization of a Western religion. So having placed themselves at the advantage position. They now use that position to make sure that they lord it over those people who punish them. So, but that's the racist and that fundamental question. If in Yoruba land, the free slaves from Sierra Leone and others established the religion there, Crowder and the rest of them, and we didn't have such a similar situation in Yoruba land, then why is that of the Igbo the way it is? So please, instead of rather bemoaning our past, we should have a rethink. Please, I submit. Um, thank you, Professor. It was a wonderful presentation. Um, for us, and the fact, oh, my name is uh, Chijeke Onora from the sculpture section of Fine and Fine Arts. Um, sometimes I wonder what our, the story of our people would have been without someone like uh, Simon Attenberg and the likes. I'm talking about artistry. Because I know there were people who, who readily say that anthropologists are not in a position to tell our history. And that may be correct, but what they have done, somebody like Simon Attenberg, and somebody like Matthew Thomas and the rest, have helped our study of art history, even if they were known, uh, they were not artistry scholars. Um, one little thing I know, I don't know how many of you met Ottenberg, I met him. I met him, uh, if you have neared my studio when in the early 90s, if I describe it, it will make you laugh a little, but a lot of things happened there. But one thing was, very clear. We use the one bamboo stick to hold the ceiling so that it wouldn't keep it. So you can fill in the blank spaces in my stories. But somebody like Ottenberg who visit the place and we will have a chat. I also saw him um, meet him at the uh, Ridicule's house because he, somewhere like Ubiro, was one of those that uh, and brought people like that around and allowed us, the young ones, to interact with him. I still remember his uh, the year, his year eight, you know, when he was getting old and was having problems with you know, his hearing. He had this year eight that I kept looking at. But that's not what I'm talking about now. To so think that a man that had just turned 100 years just before he died. Um, was still publishing. I remember one of the last uh, um, journals of our department, from our department, um, secrets dealing with some of the things that uh, some of the the works of uh, recent works of Ottenberg to be published in it. Uh, it shows us that uh, we didn't need to just to retire. And, and uh, 
only know what you call those people, they're not people. Those people that just sit down and don't do it. <laughs> I don't think, uh, I wouldn't know whether a football cover attend that ever retired because he kept working. <laughs> he was still working. And um, that is one thing I've learned in associating with someone like that. I've also seen photographs taken around when he was making his presentation. I was saying, oh, that was the way he took some of those photographs of the uh, Enugu airport and uh, because it was in the company of his wife. For me, that enjoy photography too. I saw those uh, photographs are being priceless but it, because they helped me to assess the um, the way Enugu looks now as against them. So I commend uh, I celebrate the life of Emeritus Professor Simon Gutenberg because he lived a full life. He lived his life to the full. Um, I'll end by saying that Nibu Sena Rugolonao Ka Ekwena Odiki Okoyananda Okoyanon. Can you hear something? Ekwena God Otumba, even as we speak. Thank you. Thank you. It is exciting to know that there are people that had personal contact with Otumba. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, the organizers of this seminar. I am Chidi Amechi, the head of the Department of History and International Studies. I am happy to be here today. It's as if God guided my steps to this place. Because last night I was battling with a work I was reading. One of my candidates that I'm supervising kept or keep insisting on certain trends which I've made effort to correct. And that borders on the issue of overgeneralization. Actually, I just want to ask a simple question. How are we going to deconstruct or should I say decolonize this mentality of over-generalization, especially uh, adopting whatever we are told by outsiders about us. I actually took note of what you said about the issue of uh, matrilinear and patrilinear, you know, and if I must also add to it, Sometimes we say Igwe Mweze. That's actually all. This is a cephalous, uh, you know, uh, 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 syndrome that creates the impression that people learn was disorderly, chaotic, and that's the impression some of these uh, Eurocentric, you know, writers try to put in us. And when we look at some of these things, we tend to adopt them wholeheartedly without asking questions, without minding about certain peculiarities that existed in Ebo land. Why must we wait for others to tell us how we were? We have to write our own history. And like I said, when, we, when I try to correct some of these impression. Some of them, you know, keep quoting big names and history, politics, this, that, and that, that it has been there that the evil had no kings. That in Igbo land, women were subservient, I mean, relegated to the background, had no voice. 
That's exactly why I took note of what you said about the African women and so on. Not minding the fact that there are places in Ebola land where women, I mean, work actually. And personally, I studied and I'm still studying the human culture in Ebola land. And I have also written about the, the complementarity of the sexes in Ebola land. That's exactly the word I've chosen to you know, describe the gender relations, complementarity. But that does not remove the fact that in some places, women held sway and still determine directly or indirectly what happens. And even when we talk of uh, the way we see, I want to believe that even in our restricted or our supremacist nature, in quote, the people had an organized society, I think have an organized society traditionally. So that takes me back to my question. How are we going to deconstruct some of these uh, unfounded, you know, uh, 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 ideas, or should I say overgeneralization mentality about the people political history, our gender relations, and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Hey. Don't mind what I'm wearing. I'm a, a traditional cultural attitude man. Oha Oha Yeah. When I was a little boy, Autumn Bear was my father's younger friend. My joy is that this man has arrived all the way from Mafiko. I was to stand for people, but when he called me, I'm now at the park. How do I do you? I'm now directed him. He now called and he's right in the campus here. I walked down to teach him. So I will have said uh, the, uh, the, the much I know about Ottenberg. Ottenberg and my father, they were like this. My father would teach him around. Then he said, Opeka, they call it a place of car in those days. He will be doing his research. So, I need to indicate about My joy is that uh, Chief Jasper Ishii Okoro now around. I have said much about Autumn Bear. Yes, Jasper is now around as a journalist. And he hope more, more in the home than me. So, Jasper, you are welcome. Over to you. Did introduce yourself? Okay. Okay. I introduce myself. I'm going to do it as our law. Law. Aha, Onuka. Hey. You are now. When? Hey. Onu Jawa. Jawa. Yeah, yes. I'm just by Osoro. I'm a journalist. And. Uh, Somebody dragged me here, and that's my professional colleague in those days. <laughs> we were called the radical journalists in those days. Uh, but the radicalism was to tell the people the truth and nothing but the truth, and to protect the uh, commoners. Yes, I'm from Afiko. Afiko is a very great town, ancient town full of culture and tradition. So, uh, somebody was talking and he said, Ottenberg went to Hopia and he was, uh, he was not fully accepted. So he moved that. That is true. Ottenberg told us about it. And the impediment that made him go to Hopia. If you watch my dressing, I'm not, I'm dressed in English, uh, way, but I brought this cap as a symbol 
of what Ottenberg did like. He cherished it so much. And in Africa, we have age grade system, a well tailored age grade system whereby this age grade graduate from East Celia to Eto, Epo Eto, from Epo Eto to uh, Esa, from Esa to Onekara, from Onekara to Hori, and from Hori to Rikweri. All these categories have their, uh, their functions, traditional functions. Ottenberg, incidentally, when he arrived, he joined from Eto, he participated fully in all the activities that they were doing. And Phoebe, the wife she, he came with, was also aligning herself with the women. All the activities of the women she participated. That is how she wrote her own book. Ottenberg's greatest regret was that he could not speak happy for that. But the people that guided him at that time we our people associate with Hopodo Hopodo Calabar, teach uh, those teachers to, to look around. We have more uh, uh, to, uh, training towards uh, the river, Hopodo Calabar and uh, all those areas. For those who go to school, who do, do don't go to school, trade along the cross river. They were avoiding this area, the land area. I met Ottenberg as a small boy, an infant. It was just giving us the key book, the key book, the key book. My father was a headmaster and a teacher in a mission school, church of Scotland mission. So when he parades, he always he hang his back. And then Nachimu, who later became an honorable member of the Federal House of Assembly, and Lawrence as well was a retired police officer, who is incidentally is the father of the young man that introduced me, and the father of Professor Uche Azikul. They were all guiding him. <coughs> so what Professor Simon Ottenberg is to African people, is exactly what Professor Ottenberg thinks African people. He tells us that he is a people person and our people accepted him as such. When he came back in about 1992, he was the only foreigner who won a chieftaincy award in our area. When he came for that award, there's a picture I will show you here. Maybe you can pass it around. There are more other pictures. This was when he was all in Kara. After this cap, by next year, no, by this year, April 20, to be exact, I will now graduate with all other my age mates to all in Kara. I will wear the few red cap. The all in Kara are the special traditional uh, advisors to the SAS. SA is categorized into two, the chiefs and the ordinary SAS. They have full judicial, traditional judicial and le uh, legislative functions, while the others are the, to execute the, uh, the orders and whatever. Somebody talked about women not giving uh, their maybe uh, rights in quotes in Africa. Well, to some extent it is true. For the, the role of the women in our own society and to assist the men, the men folk. The traditional ruler of our place cannot perform a judicial function traditional judicial function. In case of land cases, you say, let's go to the SA. No, it doesn't happen in Africa. It's these age group categories, especially the SAS, that handle such powers. 
I also accompanied Autumn back to okay, sorry. I accompanied I accompanied uh, the first lady, Miriam Bangida, to an award. Postgraduate honorary award here. Yeah. So when we came it was uh, around 1992. When we arrived and I saw Autumn that I was so excited. It was the second meeting. So he embraced me alongside with uh, one Dr. Emu. That Dr. Emu is the son of Nunach Emu, who incidentally, when, Ottenberg, when he was born, he was named Ottenberg. Presently, he's in UK, practicing medicine. So after the ceremony, we came out with Dr. Emu and we spoke at length. That was when he told me, because he wanted us to communicate in happy to that way, but unfortunately he said that was his greatest risk in regret because some elderly women came from our people who were, uh, uh, who were singing the Mpamite song. There's one Mpamite song which is very popular and no woman So he wanted to read our people to address them. So all he did was he said, I will go to Unuka, then ahe, ahe, which is our slogan. When we have a merriment or whatever uh, uh, occasion, call it occasion or all those uh, big occasions. So what I want to, the message I want to give is that on the occasion. That on the 20th, 20th of April, there will be a gathering commemorating all these stages autumn by past through. In our people, that gathering will entail up to 50,000 uh, not to use, a toss, a sas, uh, only caras, uh, a horis. Now, when they arrive, they now retire and requires. Requires are already built in their houses. Whatever you like, uh, want to give to them. And in our people culture, if you are a requiry and you are physically fit to catch a goat passing, passing by you, if you are physically fit to catch it, <laughs> then it is your own and they will slaughter it. <laughs> the same with power. <laughs> so some of them are fit. There's one Gabriel Anega who is a student. He passed through this, uh, this uh, institution. He's now in the same age with Ottenberg. But we have three age brackets. He's in, in the same bracket. This man is, has been with Professor Ottenberg for a very long time. He's his age mate and uh, associate at the University of then there's another person whom we can have contact with. That is uh, uh, Gabriel, who, uh, uh, Professor Matthew Alou. He was there at the uh, US when Professor Simon Ottenberg uh, died. Then, when he was going, we had celebrated his 100th year, and the African people made the uh, uh, documentation which we got tributes from across this land. Matthew Alu went up and Alu went and presented it to him. Oh, After the presentation, he saw it and acknowledged and wished our people well, oh, as we wished him well and long life, not long after he died. Mm -hmm. So there was a book, or there is a book, which he authored, which was published after he died. It was already in the press before it died. So we asked Dr. Matthew to bring it home. Because incidentally, we are in the book is not handy now. So we can make a remedy. So he said it's only, we gave out some and only in copy. So we made arrangements to make a, 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 more, a, more copies of this. Just a minute, give me that book. That's more good. The 
This book is Trouble Descent in an African Society, the Everybody People. But did he give consent and he wrote the uh, board for this uh, book to be republished? I, I attended, I, uh, I'm a product of the University of Ricardo, I rent theater as. So when maybe some of you must have seen me in films in those days, corporate you know, and all, all that. This book is so voluminous. Maybe you, you have it. I saw the, uh, the voluminous <laughs> part of it. And when I was reading it, I was so excited because I hear of the book. But now he gave consent and this book was produced. That is why some of us are able to have this copy. I don't know if you have some of the copies. So please, I'm so delighted that I'm part of this. Director, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm so I'm so encouraged by your kind words. Uh, let's take as much as time from the minute. Uh, one sentence each to all of this. Um, Chris, I have nothing to add because you ask your questions, you answer them. <laughs> so, uh, thank, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it to the uh, final apply that, uh, my friend uh, Neka Akwara. The thing, yes, as people, was also under colonial administration, of course. <laughs> if you met us uh, sufficiently early, uh, you saw that when I got there, I decided to put uh, Utenberg in food. Uh, what he said was the officers at Omaha were suspicious of uh, the Americans. So they wouldn't allow them. Uh, of course, the two uh, persons he was talking about is himself and his wife. We are suspicious about uh, uh, people. You might even doubt whether indeed the person he is uh, introducing as his wife is really his wife or a member of the CIA or something. So that's the way it is. Can I add this one line? That the Americans played some part in encouraging, especially the African Americans. I have uh, the book by the one that uh, the band, our Department of Music is named after. No, no. Uh, uh, it's actually an uh, American. Jackson Building. Four Robson. Four Robson. The theater. Yes. Oh, theater. Okay, thank you. So I have his book, Autobiography, where he narrated how the prompting came from him to people like Azikiwe, Nkuruma, and uh, other people who came back to push uh, anti-colonial struggles. So because Americans had a direct interest in this part of the world, so uh, they tended, when he suited them, to work against the British uh, colonial interest. So they were um, a, a wee bit uh, suspicious of any uh, person that they didn't quite um, know very well. 
and you will soon, if we get into it, uh, we might not come out easily. Uh, I know that I always made a point of, of disabusing the, uh, what you call fallacies uh, on the Osu when I taught social stratification as a course in uh, Namjazikiwe University. Osu, to put it simply, was a social institution and wasn't and never functioned in the shape that people now, none of whom saw nobody, either in this room or elsewhere, people alive now, saw the authentic Osu. If it were that, you wouldn't have people going to volunteer to become Osu in the same shape as you enroll to become a reverend sister or a reverend father. One man, and I have it in one of my publications, said the Osu institution was the nearest that the ego came to having a monastery. Yeah, it's simple. Now, if they told me that they discriminate a Osu marrying a non Osu, fine. I told them, why doesn't a reverend sister, why, does, why don't you marry a reverend sister? You can't. The thing is that Osu in a theocentric uh, sense, in a sense of considering things that are spiritual, is even deeper than the institutions that the church has. You know the reason? Because also definitionally is a theoanthropic. Theoanthropic, that is half a deity and a half a human being. He works for a principal deity. Like he said, if you are selling something in the market and Osu came and he's not stealing it, he used the word steal. Uh, one of you used it. He's not stealing. If he feels like I like this computer for authentic. Uh, 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 how do we religious reasons maybe the deity needs it you come and think and you won't struggle with him you can't the reason is that it's actually the principal deity that is taking it so that is it it's an institution if you go into it it can make a book it's not something that is uh, as people present it. Um, yes, and you might be happy to hear that the international community is also sharing your worry. Uh, many of the foreign anthropologists did a lot of harm. Deadly break. Someone like uh, Bishop Basden didn't hide his own. There are many of them who say, do your stuff so as to, to destroy the culture of these people. Because it's reason, it's reason. The culture cannot coexist with Her Majesty's government. Not that the culture is not good. It's just that Majesty's government cannot be there, and the uh, indigenous culture is also there. And in the other one, he used the metaphor that the job of 
the anthropology should be that of an enemy, uh, that of a soldier reconnoitering the base of the enemy so as to attack it. My friend, uh, Greg, uh, thank you. You promised I will fulfill this. Gentlemen, <laughs> you and uh, Emeka told me you were going to be there. It wasn't long I mentioned it to you. Uh, you are puzzled at Otenberg's uh, interest, at innovation. Let me tell you, art is a very, very, very important part of sociality. All we do is study everything humans are doing because they are human and not animals. All the human content of existence. How can you do that without art? He studied the traditional one, but he also know things are changing. Just like Shelton in 1962 uh, also directed his own attention to uh, fiction you know, narrative fiction. He studied a number of them, Ewesi, uh, uh, Achebe, Shoinka, a number of them that have come up at that point. The idea is to see what this new generation are using their work to do. So, uh, of course, we can't deny that uh, you, you only need to come to Institute of African Study, UNN, now. And uh, you see a mobile exhibition, you know, starting from the uh, yam band, all that. There is uh, the fish that I, I saw around here now. So you need to really ask questions. But I tell you, there is one thing running across all those publications that he did on art. That is, it is not uh, empty. It is it's not uh, desultory. It's focused. What he's uh, exploring is the interconnection between those arts and uh, the, the culture. So some of them, he actually uh, said that much, tradition, tradition. I, I, I read at least two saying specifically tradition, African tradition, Nigerian tradition. I mean, marginalization, you, like you, like uh, my friend Chris, you ask your question, you answered it. Uh, Jasper, thank you for contributing. Uh, DSP Oji, have uh, referred to your own why answering on that thing. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank people who have organized this, um, led by his, uh, himself, and the people like uh, Chris Ibermesi. I won't tell my life story today. Uh, but just to say that I countered Otenberg, here and there, bits and pieces until Professor BJS uh, got me to read uh, Otenberg's book uh, to do a comparison between that and uh, one by the two on the other hand. You know, so uh, because of their own. Uh, so, um, but permit me to, to sound a bit hopeful. Otenberg particularly worried until he died about erosion of what made the people evil. My sense, having studied the ego, from the point of view of somebody who grew up an evil person, and who stepped back to watch to see what other people do not easily see. I think things are not as bad as 
some people have uh, painted it. What what it looks like when I leave, they rush for change. They, man, it looks like that there, there's a cream also. There's something in the if you like cultural DNA, if you like that word, of the ego. That know that name that you don't rush. If you leave your home after rushing, you have a, you should have a home to come back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Having said that, I want to say that I appreciate your time. I'm honored that you give us all of this time. It's an honor to us at the ISUNN, and I want to tell you individually that we are very grateful. God bless you.